Good morning, I'm Ray Dillard and this is Pam Aries. She's the property owner here and uh, she has a lakeside property and she's going to be talking about uh, uh, the uh, transition from when she bought the property and all the, uh, all the issues that she uh, found solutions for and has uh, developed a beautiful, beautiful gardenscape here. And so I'll let you talk, Pam. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm going to use my little phone here to keep us on track since we know that uh, we're all busy and we got stuff to do. Um, Ray's correct, when we bought the property in 2004, there was not much of anything here. The uh, now stained fence that you see was up, but uh, none of the plantings in the front yard were there uh, other than some of the trees and so on. So I wanted to start you at the top of the yard and just preface everything by saying that all of the gardens and what you see here is really driven by the fact that it's a downhill property and it's a fairly steep downhill property. So I was faced with a lot of water runoff. And as a farm kid, you know that you solve that problem with uh, a lot of terraces and that's what you're gonna see inside as we start the garden. So up here on top, uh, you can see this used to be just dirt. When we moved, we moved in, it was just dirt. And of course, uh, that fence was acting as a, a dam for everything. So I put in a cement uh, drain uh, into the yard, but a, a cement fence in front of that. And I brought that all the way around to the other side of the driveway uh, with uh, continuing that cement drain and up down the side. So uh, you can see in some of this, uh, I had to put up a little fencing because deer who do not like pennies, what I was told, and they didn't like them for three years, they suddenly decided to start having lunch. So I threw up that and the other uh, wire fencing that you see. So let's go inside and take a look at some of those solutions. Well, welcome back. We're inside the fence now. And as you can see, as we look down this property line, I'm going to show you the terrace solutions throughout the yard first, and then we can look at the individual spots. But you can see down that long row, uh, which is very long all the way down, uh, I had a rock wall built to uh, provide some solution immediately inside that fence line and uh, start directing the water runoff. I want to show you first, and we're going to walk as, uh, I'm going to talk as we walk, which thank God I'm not chewing gum. Okay. <laughs> Uh, walking down the driveway, i uh, show you the first uh, big concept here, which was, ooh, walking backwards down a stiff driveway is not a good idea. But uh, I wanted to show you, I had to put in three layers of terrace because it was so steep, the drop off from uh, the very top of the driveway. And uh, this, of course, where most of the runoff was occurring, so I had to fix that. My solution was to follow the rock wall with uh, plantings that would emphasize but not hide those rock walls. So I like uh, guacamole hostas, and they have loved all of that, despite the fact that we lost a tree which uh, took away their shade, and now I'm gradually putting that back again. So let's take a walk across the front of the uh, terrace here. So again, what you see here in the shape of the rock walls, which, oh, by the way, I laid out with uh, not only hoes, but flags, and then I decided to put stakes in the ground because I didn't want a, something getting knocked over because I definitely wanted this kind of shape to make it look, look more natural in the landscape. And so you see it all coming around here. Uh, the plantings in this, I was looking for color, size, and so on. Uh, across the front of it to break it up a bit we ended up putting in the uh, gazebo which by the way said you need to dig that 36 inches in Alabama clay not fun <laughs> and my husband said yes before he knew <laughs> so uh, anyhow that's we put in the center of it so that there would be a focal point on top and I wanted white which I really don't have anywhere else in the front yard except in some flowers and of course really on uh, Many of my trees um, have uh, white flag foliage with them. So all of this, I had a fabulous guy putting this in for me, by the way. He had a vision and a skill set, and I'm sure I was his sole employer for about a year. I'm going to give you a sneak peek, because we're standing here, into this middle bed, which was my project for the summer, and that's where we'll spend most of our time. But uh, I don't want to distract with that right now. So. 
the rest of the yard, uh, the rest of this rock wall was laid out as so. And uh, initially I thought that I, I only needed to come out maybe 10 feet, but as I stood up here with the initial layout, I realized that was not going to be nearly enough, particularly if I wanted to add some serpentine shape in it. So I ended up moving my stakes several times, so never underestimate the importance of laying enough stakes out or flags or hose or whatever, because it will always require something different than you probably initially thought. So as we look down the yard here toward the house, you will see the other two rock walls that I had built. And largely I needed to break up the space of that line that was going down the yard. Um, it was awfully boring. There used to be seven Leland cypress there in my neighbor's yard and they cut those down last year to stop squirrels from tripping the uh, transformer that's there. And that worked, but it left me with a pretty bare spot, which I'll worry about later. Okay, we're going to take another sneak peek as we're walking down the outside of the uh, yard at another entrance into the middle garden. Uh, and a large part of that task, as you're going to see, is that we laid out all of those stones to help me walk through that and not fall on my keister. Fortunately, the landscaper who laid them out had them laid out uh, in stepping stone lengths that ladies could walk and actually carry something and uh, not worry about having to fall down. So again, we'll look at that later, but that's the view coming in from this side of the yard. And uh, a quick word about the um, uh, big plants that you see on both sides, it's limelight hydrangeas. I did not get this side trimmed this year, so that's why they're as high and big as they are. I got the other side trimmed. They're maybe a foot shorter. Uh, so I'm not sure what I'll do next year, trim or not. We'll see. Okay, so this is the original one and only rock wall that was in uh, this whole yard. So clearly they didn't have the same vision of water runoff that I did, but uh, that was what we started with and gave me the idea to use rock as the solution for the other uh, water containment issues that we had. Uh, a quick comment here, we, ha we uh, had this summer put in a dry creek bed because again we got water runoff. And the guy who did that was just wonderful, so we got our fingers crossed that it's actually going to work. But the color of the stone works well with the rest of it. So uh, in front of you, you see the main project this summer, which is the middle bed. And we're just simply going to walk the line of that so that you can appreciate the length and the uh, serpentine shape. Okay, good morning again. We're now getting ready to walk in the middle bed, which was my major huge project this year. Uh, as I said uh, a few minutes ago, these stepping stones were a major piece of um, stability, but also beauty uh, going in this yard. And it also formed a certain shape and gave us some structure that I'm really liking a lot and was thrilled with it. The only thing I had in place before this project was um, this uh, two and a half foot bed lined with the rock behind it. Um, I at least had the vision to put that in a few years ago and dug it myself. Uh, so I was appreciative of all the help doing the rest of it. But I want to talk about it a little bit, the plants that are in here. Uh, this is hopefully, yes, the sign for this grass. So this is uh, Everillo, E-V-E-R-I-L-L-O. It's a wonderful grass. It likes it here. It only gets direct afternoon sun for maybe two and a half, three hours. Otherwise, it's uh, what you see. This gorgeous orange plant is a orange marmalade crossanda. So Ray can see the tag there. Uh, I bought this this year for the first time because I just 
lusted after that orange color in the landscape because I knew it would help uh, everything else pop. So even though it's an annual, I am willing to buy this every year from here on out because um, I've discovered that it likes where I've got it. It's getting just enough light, uh, enough water, enough everything. And all you have to do to keep it blooming is you, you uh, deadhead these things after they bloomed and then they keep coming back. So you see that it's like them where it is and clearly in full bloom. I've had them planted for about two months now. I have this space here where I had the indent following the uh, rock wall out and I decided, well, why not carry the theme that's in this bed through here as well as the fact I have these plants left over. So <laughs> it works. And as you know, a lot of gardening is exactly that. You just try it and see if it works and mostly it does. So I want to show you how the uh, how the layout of the stones actually gives uh, a lot of definition to this garden area. Now the landscaper that I hired, I had all of these stones laid out around these other beds, but I just had them on their side because it was just me. And he said, I can put those all together for you and stand them up and probably use less stone. I said, well, happy for that miracle. So he did that. And then all of these stones were laid out as stepping stones uh, throughout the garden. It eliminated the uh, falling on your backside hazard at the top of that hill because we were routinely slipping on uh, landscape fabric and pine needles that I had down, not a good solution. So uh, as you pan to the right, you'll see the rest of that uh, structure. He made me a little garden bench, which I'm very appreciative of. Uh, I have had these particular pasta in these pots for years. I'm trying to find out uh, the name of them for a friend of mine. You can tell I didn't get out here and manicure things before we did this shooting, which is a good thing. It would have made me crazy. Uh, but this um, is the top of this new garden, and it was really, aside from clearing everything out, getting the stones in and all of that, which I love, this was one of the focal points here because I liked having iris in this bed at the very bottom of the bed but because it was such a hard downhill slope uh, dirt was always washing over them so and y'all know that that's not good for rhizomes so anyhow came up with this concept of let me put in a couple of raised garden beds uh, Donnie gave me a, a a tomato plant which the birds loves and the squirrels as it turned out they took the first fruits of that labor and uh, again something I haven't kept up with but you can see that these uh, Monzano uh, tomatoes actually do well in this bed. So this doesn't get more than six hours of light a day, but it's that hard afternoon stuff, which is good. So uh, stepping down uh, into the bed, uh, these are the these are the uh, two layers of stone that I had added that make the terraces into three and that solved the runoff problem. I was in here uh, yesterday planting planting uh, iris and I have all the rest of them to go in, hopefully later today. And uh, then the plantings, initial plantings anyway, will be complete. So what I have in here is, it's all an experiment. I tried to use as many perennials as I could. I have some lantana, which is not supposed to be perennial, but in my bed beside the uh, driveway parking pad where there's a lot of cement to soak up heat. Maybe that's why they came back every year. I'm hopeful these might as well for similar reasons. It's got rock in front of them to act as a heat sump of sorts. So it will be a, um, a, a nice surprise next spring to see what actually comes back, what actually ended up in a spot that it likes. And how are you gonna do it? So as you look up uh, the yard, you will see up by that gazebo, <clears throat> you see those two big iron pots that are on pedestals. And then as you come down the yard, you will see that look repeated with these two iron pots on pedestals going into this part of the yard. So my intent was always to try to include some elements that tied the whole thing together, and that was my stab at that. So now, let's look at the front of that bed. And this is after, and I have done nothing to fix this yet. This is after finding my dog jumped in this end of the bed and dug a lot of it out for me, so I haven't replaced it yet. 
Uh, but this is this is setting, as you can see, three to four feet down from the back side of that bed. So again, my idea was to have this is the center point, the sky pencil hall is on the end framing it, and then to have graduated plantings of annuals, largely because they flower so well, uh, along the front of that so you could open up that middle of the yard and see that. But you can see that not reading a tag has its price. <laughs> and that's how we end up with lantana that is uh, four or five feet tall that blocks that. But I have a solution in place for that. So again, uh, gardening is always a discovery. You're always asking for assistance and ideas and stuff. And uh, n mostly they come and most of whatever God gives you is always beautiful in the end. So happy gardening. All right, so uh, we wanted to uh, make sure we added a commercial here uh, in this video. And this is really a commercial for the annual Master Gardener plant sale. So these gorgeous plants I got uh, from Ray at our plant sale last May, and I put them in this. They were maybe this tall when I got them. Uh, and I, had, I always like to have something in these big pots to frame the steps leading down to the boathouse. And uh, these are just gorgeous. So you always find wonderful things at the sale. Uh, down at the boat dock, I've got uh, some beautiful grass that I bought that was uh, belonged to Dee Hubbard. And uh, I always think of her and I think of Ray when I look at the plants that I got that I know that they uh, brought and contributed. So if you have a chance next year to go to that plant sale, please do. you find lots of great buys and uh, get inspired to do all kinds of cool things. See you there. Bye. For coming along to look at this. Uh, I am thrilled with it. Uh, you know, as we all know, God is the master gardener, and all of these little things, including us, are his creation, so it's always, uh, it's always interesting to see how it's going to turn out, but we know it'll turn out well. Thanks, and I look forward to seeing you in your garden someday. Bye.